Today I'm going to show you how to use a countersink drill bit. I'm going to show you how to adjust it properly for the length of the screw that you're using. And we're going to go over why you would want to use it and some ways to hide the screw when you are finished if you so desire to do so. One of the main reasons you would want to use a countersink drill bit is to prevent the wood from splitting. When you're attaching something along the end grain side of a piece of wood, it will traditionally just split when you put the screw in. When you countersink and drill a pilot hole with your countersink bit, that does not happen unless you really over tighten the screw. There's also some little tips and tricks to using these and we're going to go over them. So let's dig into this. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Dirdorf and this is Detroit DIY. Let's get started. Once we've selected our screw size and length, then we can select our countersink bit. Let's take a closer look at these. Countersink bits typically come in four sizes. You see right here it says number eight. This is the one you would use for a number eight screw. It is going to prepare the correct size countersink for that screw. Here we have a nice little package and I kind of like these. They're in the little quick connect so you can turn it around. You can put the tip in here that you're planning on using, whether it be a Phillips head or a Torx. You can change it out very easily with this set screw. You can also remove the countersink itself with this set screw and switch over to any of these other countersinks. Here we have a little set of four, which is for a number six screw, a number eight screw, a number 10 screw and a number 12 screw. And these all have different sized countersink bodies. And the reason for that is one, the screw head is bigger. And two, if you want to plug it, they're made specifically for that size. So the number 10 and the number 12, you could use a 3 8 dowel to plug the hole. And for the remainder of them, the six and the eight, you would use a 5 16 dowel to plug the hole. That way you could hide the screw completely or even make it decorative. So by loosening this set screw right here, we can adjust the length of the drill bit. It'll slide in and out. There's a little magnet in this one that kind of grabs it and pulls it in. But you'll also notice that there is a flat spot on the drill bit. And that flat spot needs to be so that your set screw and your countersink can hold on to the drill bit. The reason this is adjustable is for different length screws. Typically, ideally, you would like to adjust the drill bit to the length of your screw. So your screw head would wind up being about right here. So you would want this out as far as you can get it. This particular countersink will not let me go to an inch and a half screw. And that's okay. I'm going to set it to the deepest point that it'll let me go, which is right here. And it's just going to be slightly shy of making it to the end of the screw. We're going to go ahead and get that tightened in place. And away we go. We are ready to drill with this countersink. Since our material is three quarters of an inch thick, our center line on this is going to be three eighths of an inch. And I've got my combination square set at 3 8 slightly there under just to compensate for the width of my pencil lead. Now that we have our center line marked out, we just need to determine where we want to put the screws. And we're going to put one right down here near the end because this is typically where it would split. And we'll put one right here. Now well, let's get three of them in there to hold it together good for us. Using these 90 degree clamps, I'm going to go ahead and get that on here and that's going to hold us fairly secure while we get our countersink screws in and we won't have to worry about it moving on us or trying to fall apart. In the description of this video, I'm going to put a link to some of the tools that we're using today. If you use those links, it does not cost you any extra, however, I do get a small percentage.
This is the holder for our countersink bit and this is what allows you to be able to put it in this way and use it as a countersink or put it in this way and use it to drive your screws. Then we just pull down on this collar and it locks it into place. When you're drilling your countersink it's important that you drill straight down and not a little angle this way or this way. If you're on an angle this way or this way it is not so bad but you definitely want to be straight going this way and if you're close to the end you want to be careful and make sure that you go in as straight as possible. Let's go ahead and drill this hole. So the fluting of the drill bit will plug up a little bit and you'll notice that it becomes resistant. So now that we've got our hole drilled, we're going to go ahead and get run the countersink in. And there we have it. Now this depth of a countersink here is going to allow for the screw head to sit right down flush. Let's go ahead and put a screw in there. And there we have it, a nice flush screw. Now the nice thing with the countersinks are, if you don't want to see this screw, it will also do that for you. Now we have to be careful how deep we drill in to hide that screw. So our material is only three quarters of an inch thick. So if we go down in an extra quarter of an inch, that is enough to glue a plug in. This one is offset. They're not all offset like this, but this one is. And that is about three eighths of an inch deep right there. So if you went all the way to that shoulder, you would have drilled through half of this material. And we don't want to quite go that deep. We want more than half of this material still holding. So we want to go down and we want to use about that much of the countersink bit. Sink it that far extra into the wood. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to draw nice and straight. Now that we're through both pieces of material with the pilot bit, we're going to go ahead with the countersink. But now I'm going to take and let that countersink dig down in there a little further to about right there. So as you can see, we have a much deeper countersink hole. Let's go ahead and put a screw in that. And when the screw gets tight, we want to stop. So what I have here is a piece of 5 16 doweling. This is just standard doweling that you can pick up at the big box stores. And that will fit nicely in this hole. So typically, we would put a little bit of glue on here. And we would knock it in. For this demonstration, I'm not going to glue it because I'm going to pull this back apart. But there it is. Now we'll cut that off. We'll sand it and it'll look like a decorative screw cover. Okay, with that cut off, we're ready to go. Now I did not cut it flush. We will take it the rest of the way with some sandpaper. I've got some 150 grit here. I could get out my orbital and sand this off in a matter of seconds.
seconds, but we'll be okay here. We'll just get her cut down. All right, there we have it. So it leaves a nice little decorative spot. Some people choose to use a darker wood instead of a lighter wood or even to make their own plugs out of the same kind of wood to try and hide it as best as possible. So that's up to you whether you want to make them stand out or make them blend in. But that is what the shoulder is all about on the countersink bit is for getting these dowels in here. 5 16th and 3 8 I have a couple of pieces of scrap wood now oriented in the other way where we're going into the end grain and through the side of the end grain instead of the side grain. And we're going to put a screw right here with no countersink. We may or may not split it. Screw designs have changed drastically over the last few years. And I'm hopeful that you can see this. This is not the screw we'll be using, but this is an example of little cutters that they've put underneath the bugle heads of the screws. These are intended to remove material without splitting, hopefully. They're helpful. When I edit this video, if I can't see these in this video, then I am going to take a picture of it and throw that up. This is the screw that we'll be using. And it also has a form of cutters under here. It's got some recessed notches in it. It's different than the other one, but those are intended to be the cutters or to help remove or displace material without a countersink. So let's see what we got. Of course, either way, if you didn't use a countersink and you just tried to run them in, you would not be able to use the wooden dowel. And we did not get a split. However, it's just not as pretty as when you go through with the countersink. And as you can see, I did run that in. It is slightly below the surface. So, like I say, the screws have come a long way in aiding the protection of the wood and not to split. It's not guaranteed that it won't, but it's definitely a helpful design change in the screws to help them countersink without splitting. That's all we got for this time. I'm hopeful that this tutorial will help you better understand why you would use a countersink and how to hide the screws so that they're not visible at all. Remember, it's the details that make for the better project. If you enjoyed yourself, click on the video or the playlist that's going to pop up next to me. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider doing so. Remember to always respect the power of your power tools. And we'll see you soon.